on his way. Gary and Rory have been cheating, we've had a meeting with their parents and it's been decided to split them up. <laughs> so with Gary and Jonathan is one of the country's top midfielders who's decided to retire when he wins his first medal with Aston Villa. It'll be a lovely way to celebrate his 73rd birthday. <laughs> Paul Merson! <laughs> with David and Rory is a former England rugby captain and member of the Menswear Council who says he hates flashily dressed men, which is why we put him opposite Jonathan, so we can have a decent run-up. Lawrence Delalio. <laughs> and because we're 100 today, let's just have a look back at that very first show. with our round about grown men involving... Nick, Nick, yes, Nick before yes, you yes, begin, yes. I couldn't let this joyous celebration pass without spreading the good news that we have received a special message from none other than HRH the Queen on the eve of this 100th show. I'd like to read it out to you if I may. Dear lads, <laughs> congratulations on reaching 100 shows. I think it's great telly and much better than that shite my Edward makes. <laughs> Good news for the show, though, isn't it? The great news for David, I mean, it's his first century. Yes! <laughs> and let me just warn you, David, because you've complained about me every single week. Well, let's see how you like being next to the big gay bear over there. <laughs> he, gives you, he gets a question mark, gives you one of those kisses, it'll be, you'll feel like a tramp eating his way through his first hedgehog. <laughs> <laughs> you know, my beard, John? Yes, that bristly excuse for a beard. It's not a beard, it's false, I'll take it off if you want. In fact, it's a great pleasure for me to take a hundred shows. I'm fed up wearing this <laughs> thing. <laughs> now, now we know why he grew it. <laughs> it's handbags. Gary, Jonathan and Paul. Your feud is between a couple of people who you talk to every day, Paul, but who don't talk to each other. That was Villa's David Ginola, who is now so furious with manager John Gregory that he's even brought in Tony Blair's wife, Sherry, to help argue his case. But what is the case... Can I just say something, Nick, before, yeah. before we start? It's just that um, we've all had personal problems, and I think we should just take this time to say how much we admire Paul for that, that television broadcast he gave when in front of the um, nation's press he admitted that he'd signed for Middlesbrough. <laughs> <laughs> so, Gary's team, what is the spat about? Uh, is he a good laugh, old general? Is he, is he fun? No, is he, is he, he is, he's a very talented player. Yeah, is he fun to be around there? <laughs> is he one of the lads, Paul? Do you hang out with him and you just joke with him? No, I don't hang yeah. out with him, but he's, he's a nice bloke. He, uh... But he can take a joke, though. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> a lovely hair, isn't he? <laughs> I bet it's all you boys can do after the match to stop from struggling it. <laughs> That's what I'm doing there. <laughs> That's why you're wearing the gloves, he insists, doesn't he? <laughs> you may have touched the hair, but only with the gloves. <laughs> He's not German. <laughs> That's, my... That's my one voice does all offer. <laughs> do you know Sherry then? Sherry Blair. <laughs> no, I don't say I do. 
Do you like the look of her? <laughs> That's why I stopped drinking because of girls. <laughs> You don't drink at all anymore, do you? No. You've knocked it completely on the head, haven't yeah. you? It must be strange for you now you're not drinking to go home and see the two medals on the shelf where you used to see four. I mean, that must be disappointing. <laughs> <laughs> Things like that must be. They must have. You've had a drink towel, haven't you, David? Yeah, I once had a bottle of 61 moves on Rothschild. It was corked. <laughs> when I used to drink in Bath, I remember once, yeah. I woke up the next morning and I was... I was wearing some trousers from Marks and Spencers. <laughs> I like that lovely shirt you've got on now. Oh, see, I buy a lot of these clothes and I go in, I must admit, I don't try them on. That might not surprise many of you. Or, or, or look at them. <laughs> well, so, and I bought this one and I didn't realise I tried it on. It appears to be a maternity feeding blouse because... Look, I, I had no idea. For start, it's got no buttons on the middle bit. Look, I don't know what's going on there. Belly button pierced. So, ladies, I'm pierced the donkeys here. Look at that. I led the pack. Look, there you go. Oh, and I've got a cowbell down there. Oh. <laughs> that as well. Come on, let's have an answer. Uh, the answer is that um, Gin Law's suing the Aston Villa, isn't he? Because Gregory said some things about he wasn't fit, he was fat or something. He's correct for three points. Wow. Yeah. Well done. Ginola says he doesn't wear deodorant because women should be attracted to sweat and bristles. Well, it's always worked for Martina Navratilova. <laughs> <laughs> David Ginola's full name is David Desire Mark Ginola. By curious coincidence, Gary Lineker's full name is Gary Desire Mark Lawrence. <laughs> 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 David, Rory and Lawrence, we take you back to a little temper tantrum at this year's Paris Dakar rally. As I'm sure Rory could tell us, that was Pascal Maimon losing his rag. But who or what caused his impromptu impression of Basil Fawlty? I reckon the driver has got uh, Jonathan Ross's radio show in his headphones and he's... Uh... <laughs> Come on. I dare you. You go through him to get to me. Come on. I'll tell you what, I'll let you off this time. Now sit down. You're a big man, but you're out of shape. I do this for a living. <laughs> it's rugby union you play, is it? Uh, yes. You should take it up, Jonathan. It's a... I... <laughs> You see, that, I think that is asking me out for a date, that is. <laughs> With Gary and Mark. <laughs> Make a lovely foursome, would we? <laughs> Live in a gay commune. Yeah! <laughs> oh! We struck a nerve there! Some of us don't mind it because we know it's a joke. Others, it's a bit close to home. I'll say no more. <laughs> Lawrence, is it true your nickname is the Italian Stallion? I've been referred to in, uh, in some races by that name, yeah. It's good news then you're on the team with David. He's known as the Hampshire Hamster. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not allowed to say, legally I'm bound not to say, but one of us is known as the Lester Molester. You do that. <laughs> <laughs> he's annoyed about it. From the driver's annoyed, he's banging his helmet against the car, which actually is something I've done quite a few times. <laughs> The 100th and last show. <laughs> there was dust, so someone's obviously going past them. Mm. Did they try and sort of um, in, try and get some help? <laughs> <laughs> I'll give you three points for that. Yes. <laughs> this is what happened a few moments before. So Maimon tried to flag down another car after his Mitsubishi went off the road, but the car refused to stop and almost ran him over, leaving Maimon to trash his own car. The Paris Dakar rally is one of the most fearsome and dangerous journeys in sport, right up there with Ali McCoy driving back home in the small hours. <laughs> the Paris Dakar rally's founder, Thierry Sabine, said that for those who go, it's a challenge. For those who stay behind, it's a dream. And for those who produce grandstand, it's a handy filler before the World Whistling Championship. <laughs> And at the end of that round, David's team have three points and Gary's team have three points.
ask what's right. going on, David's team, oh, watch geez. this. You know, I don't wish you all the best, you know that, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> So who was that and what was going on? Well, I'd say, I'd say that was the British Lions, absolutely thrilled to be on the set of Neighbours. Mm -hmm. um, can we just go back to that last, can you just freeze that last frame again? That's Austin Healy, for those who don't know. And the sign says, lose place. That's, that's rather prophetic for Austin, actually, on the Lions tour, lose place. That's, <laughs> the, that's exactly what happened the following week. <laughs> that guy we saw at the beginning, it was interesting, it's uh, the bloke shaking hands in the studio, it's a, I don't know the um, actor, Harold Bishop, yes. isn't he? Yeah. Who, Interestingly, in the middle of the series, he died, didn't he? But then mysteriously came back to life. Mm. Ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> so, what was the question, Nick? Sorry. Well, well, Lawrence, well, Lawrence well, has actually already given me the answer. Well, so we settle for that then? Yes. Well Thank done, Lawrence. Well, <laughs> The Lions' trip down under famously ended in heartbreak when they lost their last game 24-23 thanks to a last-minute try by Harold Bishop. <laughs> Gary's team, here's yours. <laughs> That's obvious. It's Jonathan's wedding night. No, I think that's a sneak preview of the new BBC Christmas special, Rolf's Animal Brothel. <laughs> <laughs> I like I'm getting a lot of groans tonight. Yeah. I rather like that. Yeah. It doesn't happen to you very often. <laughs> <laughs> Who are you looking at? I've forgotten now. Oh, it's the old lady, wasn't it? <laughs> that video you brought. Yeah. <laughs> Back to the, the, the normal world of people pretending to be pigs. <laughs> uh, is it people pretending to be pigs? Yes, basically. Yes. Is it in France because the man in the audience had a beret? Or? That's all I need. Three points. <laughs> Thank you. See, <laughs> so we can work together. Team. You saw highlights of the all French pork yard or pig contest held in the village of Trisa Bays. Up to a few years ago, it was thought that pigs couldn't sweat. That was until they saw Rory at the sty door with his overalls round his ankles. <laughs> Every pig grunt means a specific thing. <coughs> means bring food. <coughs> means rain approaching and <coughs> means Rory's at the sty door. <laughs> a pig A pig can run a mile in seven minutes. Unfortunately, Rory can run a mile in six minutes. <laughs> with his overalls round his ankles. And the scores at the end of that round are Gary's team with six points and David's team with six points. Now, what better way to celebrate our centenary than to bring back a round which we discarded many years ago. So it's the historic return after ten <laughs> series of the electronic pencil. We play a piece of sporting action and then freeze it. We want the teams to draw where they think the ball is about to go. David's team, let's set the scene. It's England against Brazil, 1992. England's star striker with 48 international goals to his name needs only one goal to equal Bobby Charlton's all-time scoring record. Now, is Lineker onside? He is. And out comes Carlos. Penalty. Gary Lineker needs to put this in the back of the net to equal the all-time record. A moment of drama at Wembley that could become a moment of history. What do you stop for, Gary? <laughs> I wish I had. <laughs> Brian Taylor just pulled him off. <laughs> We're not back up to that again. Gary, I'm amazed after such a, a physical collision, you've got the energy to get up and take it. <laughs> Paul, is that something you would have bet on? I did have a bet. I you had a bet on that? Yeah, I had a bet that he wouldn't beat the record. <laughs> was, well, I remember when I had a bet with one of the lads at Arsenal and then we played Finland away. And I crossed the ball and you missed it. Well, it went behind you and you went, you sure you ain't had a bet on me not to do it? <laughs> Actually, did it sort of, was about, that was about as much as you could manage, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> what, what's about that? Well, actually, <laughs> didn't you rather stupidly get a, a clever chip which you I fluffed and went just to the goalkeeper and it just sort of caught it um, right there, didn't it? Right, Wrong let's side. have a look Wrong to side. see what actually happened, Wrong shall side. we? Oh, dear me, he absolutely fluffed it! <laughs> <laughs> 
that. This is what you said would happen. <laughs> yeah, I'll give you three points for that. <laughs> Yeah. Curiously, not only was it Gary's last penalty for England, it was also Brazilian keeper Carlos's last ever international save. He had to retire after that with badly split sides. <laughs> <laughs> Gary's team, we take you back to the very first ball that David Gower faced in his test career. Incredibly, we've been able to find footage filmed in colour. his first ball in test cricket. Why are you wearing a lawyer's wig? <laughs> Shall we just give him a blue rinse first? <laughs> now we recognise him. There you go. Now, knowing Gower's versatility, this could have probably gone in one of at least three places. Either there, there... <laughs> David got distracted by the fact that over here. <laughs> the saint was a. His butler walked on. <laughs> <laughs> with the pins. <laughs> Neither bloke was in the yellow pages there, but he couldn't find his hat. <laughs> That's the gear. I think. Uh, oh, pretty well right, pulls it from up there. Pulls it from here and. Straight to the boundary for four. Okay, let's see what actually happened remarkably. Oh, what a nice start. No sooner it left the bat than it thumped into the fence. <laughs> okay, let's uh, let's see what you said would happen, just to confirm. Yeah, that's correct. Three points. Well, well done. done. Yeah. Well done. David likes to think of himself as a ladies' man. He once admitted, I can't remember the number of runs I scored, let alone the number of women. Well, David, for your information, the answers are 8,231 and three. <laughs> At one stage, David was actually ranked as the number one batsman in the world. That was during the world good batsman <laughs> shortage of 1985. <laughs> and at the end of that round, David's team have nine points uh, and Gary's team have nine points. As it has been for the previous 99 shows, it's time for Field the Sportsman now. Gary and Jonathan first this week. Yes, a partnership. Gary and Jonathan. Blindfolds on, you have 90 seconds to work out what you are feeling. Gary, now, you know what? I'm, I might even stage a small protest strike this week. Because every week they promise us a good looking young girl. Every week they tell me beforehand, or they hint beforehand, yeah, we've got a nice girl. Like today, the producer pretended he was dropping an accident hint saying, yeah, she's 18 year old, very fit. And I know full well, you know what we'll have? We'll have the old woman on her back doing the pig in person. <laughs> Can we have our first mystery guest, please? <laughs> You're on your own. <laughs> and your time starts now. You Believe me, you'll want to join in. <laughs> Don't worry, I'll do it for you. <laughs> yourself, I don't want to know. Uh, oh, I forgot the blindfold. <laughs> oh, you stay there, Jonathan. I'm not going to... Right. What kind of... What is this? I've got arms going out of his legs. <laughs> oh. Is she wrinkly? I don't know, but she's got a big ring. <laughs> Now. Oh, like Mark. No, that's me. Mark! <laughs> hey, what's going on now? It's a, it's, a, it's a young lady, isn't it? Is it a young lady? I don't know. Oh. <laughs> you must have felt one once. Is it, it one of those with the uh, hoops and the band's um, rhythmic gymnast? It's correct for three points. Well done. It's the better judge. It's the rhythmic gymnast. David and Rory, off you go. To your positions. Oh, I'd love to. Right, David. 
If that's the sort of show it is, we're not going to be coy like that. We're going to get stuck okay. straight in, okay? Right. <laughs> okay. And can we have our second mystery guest, please? Starts now. <laughs> Don't know about you, Rory. I've got something fairy down here. I think I have as well, David. So, <laughs> it reminds me of a holiday in Wales. <laughs> I think I've got one of Gary's cotton buds here. <laughs> Hang on. Hang on, it's a crook here. David Henry. Could be uh, Jeffrey Archer. <laughs> is it that? Uh, is it the is it your supper drink head, again? Um, yes. Champion, yeah. sort of yeah. Yeah. Uh, champion, 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 We end, as always, with the name game. This week, all the answers will be the names of people who've appeared on this show, either as guests or on Field of Sportsmen. The team in the lead goes first, which is neither team, so David's team. You can go first, alphabetically. Amazing. Lawrence, could you pass that along to Rory, Lawrence, please? Sorry. 90 seconds, get as many names uh, as you can. Starting uh, oh, from now. Uh, athlete, lunchbox. Christy, Christy Linford. Linford. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. And they haven't rehearsed that. That's not well trained. <laughs> oh, uh, <laughs> golfer, large breasts. <laughs> Colin Montgomery. Colin. <laughs> <laughs> Love Rat. I think he did the dirty with a, a royal family member. Mm, that fellow, yeah. Will Coy. Ali McCoy. Not. Oh, he did, did he? Oh, oh good. Good. <laughs> there's well, a first. No, James the other one, James, James Shirt. James Shirt, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, this is. You know those sausagey things? They sort of. Sausages. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. Right. You know, they're sort of spicy um, confections made sort of garlic. Pepperami. Yeah. And uh, this is a, a male pepperami, so he's. Pepperamo, pepperami. <laughs> 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 Gary, get back here quick. How did you get pepperami? Well, pepperami. You know, there's well, Mrs. I... Pepperami. Yeah. And who is standing next to her at her wedding? <laughs> Hello, Mrs. Pepperoni. Hello, Mr. Pepperoni. Oh, yeah, <laughs> what do you put on what? bread? Butter. 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 Yeah. And David, you are a has. Butter bean. Bean. Be yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is uh, some of the. Ah, Okay. Pass it to Johnson, please. Five shots now. Okay, uh, this is a footballer. He used to play for Aston Villa. He was even worse behaved than you. He's not a bad bloke when we met him, but you wouldn't want him to date your sister. The right you. No. <laughs> Although, I'm with you on that one. <laughs> but actually, that's that. he, he went out with all weaker. Oh, and I don't think kind of, Yeah, that's right. This is a lady racing pundit. Second name is what's happening to David's hair. Claire Bowling. That's right. <laughs> all right. If you were to lasso, improbably, perhaps, I know, but bear with me on this, if you were to lasso your penis, <laughs> Someone might describe you as this. They would say, he is a... Cop tie. <laughs> I like the way you're thinking, but it's not right. <laughs> you know when you have those hot bondage sessions with Michelle? What does she tie you up with? <laughs> Now's not the time for coyness. Pop socks? No! <laughs> hey. 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 It's all coming out now! <laughs> Down at Lineker Mansion. <laughs> A length of what? Rope. Rope, OK. And uh, another name for your cock. <laughs> Dick. Dick Roper. Dick Roper. He's this bloke's a wrestler and you wouldn't want to find a needle in him. Haystack, John. Yeah, 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 thank haystack. you. All right, you, we had him on the floor the other week. He was a big animal. You very nearly shat yourself, if you don't mind me saying so. He was, if, if you're not an adult and you're not a child, but you're even younger, you are a... Juvenile. Yes, maybe. <laughs> 
but really small gun. Mama, mama. Baby. A baby. baby. His name was Baby, believe it or not. All right, this is a. Uh, he used to cricket. Oh! Oh! It's tiebreak time and following accusations that we don't take sports seriously enough, we're actually going to test our regular speed, reaction time, strength and determination by playing musical chairs. <laughs> Gary, Jonathan, David and Rory, if you could take your places out there, please. Oh, good. Okay, you've got to run clockwise. No pulling the chairs. No pulling the chairs out of position. No chair hanging, Gary. Okay, off we go. There was a little bit of infringement on the rules there. <laughs> I'll let it go. No moving the chairs in future, thank you. Shall we take one away? Yeah, one of you take away for you oh. by the taking chair away man. <laughs> <laughs> Off we go. It looks like you can move the chair then. <laughs> and Gary's actually about to take a little stumble there. Were you after a free kick on the way down? It's a foul! He couldn't help himself. T telephone as it is, this for me is a fantastic night out. <laughs> <laughs> I've enjoyed myself so much in years. <laughs> okay. We play every it's week. Final. Come on! When's our time? Hey, this next week I'll bring in Twister. This is a big one. Come on! Everyone can play. Good, Good luck, David. Go. May the youngest man win. <laughs> Go! Just get away, will you? <laughs> Give me that chair, you silver-haired old beast. I will have what is rightfully mine. Today, Gower. Tomorrow, Osama Bin Laden. <laughs> OK, so this week's winner is Gary's team. Bloody hell. It was hard work being a sportsman, isn't it? I'll tell you what. Oh, carrying a handicap. Oh. I, would love, I would love to have seen the headlines, Two Dead in Musical Chairs. <laughs> Right. So, our thanks to Gary, Jonathan and Paul, uh, David, Rory and Lawrence. We're all off to recapture Rory's youth, who escaped this morning. <laughs> My name's Nick Hancock. They think it's all over. It is now. Oh.